Welcome to the channel guys, my name's Troy, I'm bold and I collect watches. If like me you like to collect watches and you're on a budget, then you've come to the right place. If you'd like to support the channel, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, then please make sure you're subscribed. Now with all that shameless plugging out of the way, let's take a look at the beautiful Atlanticus from RLG, or otherwise known as Richard Legrand. RLG are a micro brand out of Singapore a home to some of the best micro brands out there. But we've got to talk about the price. I've had this watch now for some time and I managed to take advantage of a discount code RLG were running at the time. I paid with import duties just over £160. And in my opinion, that's a fair price for a micro brand. Now of the time of filming, this watch may indeed be out of stock, but it doesn't hurt to troll places like eBay the watch you seek forums and maybe even Facebook if you're after this watch. The recommended retail for it is 250 US dollars and maybe in the future RLG may restock this watch. Hey guys, it might even be worth emailing them. If there is enough demand, it would be silly for them not to listen. There is no mention on the case back or on the RLG website if this watch is made of stainless steel. I'd make the assumption that it is but it's the first time I've come across a dive watch without this information. It's completely brushed and brushed to the extent that we have this deeper gray color to the case. The size of the case is as follows. The case diameter is 42 millimeter. The case thickness without crystal is 10.5 millimeter with crystal 12.5 millimeter. The lug to lug is 48 millimeter and lug width is 22 millimeter. The lugs look visually long due to this very rounded case and they have this aggressive angle but very little curve. I like it. Much like the Timex Waterbury I reviewed, this case almost looks like it's constructed in two pieces. So you might have noticed already that this dive bezel has been fitted internally. This is because it's a compressor style dive watch. The inner rotating bezel is controlled by the top crown at the 2 o'clock. Now some people on YouTube have mixed feelings on the quality of this internal bezel. By this, I mean that some people have experienced some bounce or some extra movement when the bezel's rotated. Mine isn't so bad. On occasions I do notice it more, but 95% of the time it rotates pretty smooth. The bezel is a bi-directional one, so that's pretty cool. And as standard, we have our countdown markers going all the way to the 15 minute mark. I love a cool case back. I know no one else is going to see it, but having it either as a display case back or etched with a cool image is a love of mine. The case back has this awesome Viking boat and the information around the screw down back reads NH35, which is obviously our movement, automatic for movement type, and RLG Atlanticus. Also along the side, you'll see that the water resistance is set at a pretty impressive 200 meters. Tried, tested, and a mainstay for many micro brands is the Seiko NH35A. The NH35 would give us a date complication, but because this has no date, we will find a ghost position when we take the crown out to its first position. Some of you may dislike this, but to me, I'm not so bothered, but it probably would have made more sense if they'd gone with the Seiko NH38 movement. The NH35 comes with a respected 41 hours power reserve, beats at 21,600 beats per hour and has 24 joules. It's also hacking and hand winding. Now we move on to the crown, or should I say crowns? As explained before, the crown at the two o'clock is for our inner rotating bezel and the second down at the four o'clock, this is for our time setting function and to hand wind the watch. Our time setting crown is a screw down one. It's nicely knurled, easy to grip and has a checkerboard style engraving to it. This also matches our bezel crown, but this one unfortunately isn't a screw down one. I absolutely love this crystal that RLG have used. It is only a mineral crystal, but it's a beautiful box crystal with AR coating, which has been applied on the underside of the crystal and has been sapphire coated to protect against those pesky scratches. We get a lovely distortion to the dial at different angles, which gives this watch plenty of character. I think it's a fabulous addition and I actually think it's very, very retro indeed. Anytime I put this watch up on social media, I will always get complimented on the dial color. It's most definitely out of the ordinary, 
It's a beautiful pastel blue that under some lights looks almost silver and then sometimes goes darker under different lights. It's very icy like in appearance. I just cannot put into words how stunning this blue is and I hope it's coming across on camera. We have a minute track just between the internal bezel and the indices. This is printed very clearly. You will see RLG and automatic printed at the 12 o'clock and the word Atlanticus and 200 meters 660 feet at the 6 o'clock position. I love the font of choice RLG have chosen for the word Atlanticus. It's just subtle enough to make it stand out. All indices are applied and due to this watch having no date, the dial flows extremely well. This is my first watch with BGW9 Loom. I'm familiar with the green loom. But then when this arrived, I was shocked to see it was blue. Like, it was a good shock, I have to add. But anyway, let's take a look. Now for me, the supplied strap is the biggest letdown on this watch. It is genuine leather and it has a sailcloth vibe to it, but it feels rather cheap. But on a more positive note, it does wear pretty well. It's finished with this white stitching as well as a little bit of stitching just up at the buckle. The buckle is a thick piece of again I'd say stainless steel and it's stamped with the RLG logo. Probably the best thing about this strap to be brutally honest, but we know the strap doesn't make the watch and there are plenty of options out there as the lugs are a standard 22 millimeter. Anyway, it's time to wind up today's review and it would be difficult for me to recommend this only because it seems to be quite hard to attain, especially in this colorway. But like I mentioned, it might be worth looking for it pre-owned. So get adding to any future watch lists on eBay if you're wanting to pick one of these up. There is a link, however, in the description below, just in case they get restocked over on the RLG website. If you are desperate to get hold of a compressor diver and cannot wait to get this one, you do have others to consider, from the following brands such as Spinnaker and Dan Henry. If you wanted to go a little upmarket, Christopher Ward have a true compressor dive watch. But I like this. I think the dial colour for me is the biggest advantage. Coloured dials seem to be an in thing right now. You only need to look at the slew of the latest Rolex releases to know this. And if you're after a dive watch with a difference, then I think you'll enjoy this. It is, in my opinion, far more versatile than a traditional dive watch, especially with the inclusion of a leather strap, something you don't see on a traditional diver that much. But a desk diver, this will do just well. Anyway, guys, it's been my pleasure to bring you another video. Thank you for stopping by. Please remember, I'm an enthusiast and not an expert. I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers.